Good afternoon and welcome to How Can We Ignite the Spark of Genius in Every Child? Uh, excited to share our journey with you. And this is exactly what the objective is. We are an international baccalaureate, an IB school, and right from kindergarten, right through the diploma program, which is grade 12, we have created an incubator program. And that helps to develop leadership and innovation skills. And how we have done that is what I'm going to share with you. I think that is, we realized that's the call of the day. Like that's what is really, really necessary today. How can we help our young kids, our young students to become leaders? How can we help them to be independent? How can we help them to be self-directed? How can we help them to see and realize what their passion is and then support that passion? So that's exactly what this session is about. And that's what we wanted to share. We know that every child is unique. And if every child is unique, they have their own personalized journey. And how can we support them in their personalized journey? Although all are sitting in the science class and all are looking at the water cycle, but still there is somebody in that class who's looking at the water cycle and good at drawing. And there's somebody in the class looking at the water cycle and thinking, maybe I can make a 3D model of it. Maybe I can make a blog. Maybe I can, you know. So we have all these children in our classroom and how can we touch them? That is the spark that we want to ignite. So who we are, we are, this is just a very brief introduction. I am from New York, Dwight School in New York. Uh, we have campuses in Shanghai, London, Seoul, and we've just opened on the 2nd of September, a campus in Dubai, in Al Barsha. So we are from Dwight School, Al Barsha, over here, Dwight School, Dubai. Uh, Yannicka, who's just walked in, is the head of our school. <laughs> and we have three pillars. So no matter where the Dwight School is, we have three pillars. One of our pillars is personalized learning. What I just shared with you, what personalized learning is, it is that unique, very, very unique path for each child in our class. So every student has his or her own journey. And how we support that is what we are going to share. Again, our second pillar is community. So we strongly, strongly believe in an engaged and close community. We believe that I have been a math and science teacher. And if school starts in September, till the entire month of September, we only work on bonding and forming relationships with students. Because I know if I have the relationship, it will be so quick for them to learn Newton's laws one, two, and three. But if I don't have a relationship, all these three laws will go out of the door. So it's very, very important to form that bonding relationship as a community, with parents, with teachers, with our colleagues, with children in the class. Hi, good afternoon. And our third pillar is global vision, which means that we are actually not I mean, we believe that we are not training our children to be uh, Americans or Emiratis or Indians, but what we are training them to be is global citizens and what is the impact that they can have on the earth as a whole. So we, we look at the global vision and we encourage that with trips, exchange programs, not necessarily physical trips, it could also be virtual exchanges. But these are the three pillars that we believe in. And our mission statement is what the session is about, to ignite the spark of genius in every child. As I told you, what we mean by spark is the passion, the interest, the love, the desire. So that's what we mean by spark. So the spark is what we have to for some children, it's very obvious. Now, if I'm a science teacher, and if I'm teaching, as I said, about the water cycle, and there is a child who makes a model, then I know that he loves to work with his hands. If somebody makes a good diagram of the water cycle, I know he's a visual learner. If somebody uses his iPad and makes a blog or a, 
uh, a sight on the water cycle and what it is and the impact, then I know what his skill is. So we train teachers in workshops with professional development, how you can identify that spark in your child and then how can you support that child to pursue that spark. Some, sometimes it's very obvious, right? It's very clear when we see children, we know, yes, this child cannot sit down for more than five minutes. He needs to get up. We all have that Johnny in our class, right? But then we also have a Johnny who's always taking notes. We also have a Johnny who's drawing. So as teachers, we first need to identify and then see how we can support it. And that's the professional development that we give our colleagues, our teachers. So in the picture, this is Ben. He's a ballet dancer. And of course, he goes to the School of American Ballet. He's from our New York campus, Dwight, New York. And it is very, very challenging for Ben to attend school after 11 because he has to go for his ballet training every day. He trains for professional ballet. So what he was missing two periods every day. So what we did, we saw he was missing math and he was missing design. So requested the two teachers instead of every day trying to send him via email the work that he missed because we do want to support Ben. Can we put up those two courses online? Can we offer those two classes online? Can we put our curriculum online so that Ben does not need to email the teachers and say, what did I miss today? What did I miss tomorrow? What will I miss on Thursday? He can just go to that class online and he can work on the math course that he's missing every day. That actually triggered what is called our campus in the cloud. And we call that Dwight Global. So Dwight Global is besides a campus in London and New York and Dubai and Seoul and Shanghai, we developed a school in the cloud, which is called Dwight Global. And basically, that is the school that has all these classes which the teachers have developed online, our same curriculum, but online, to help people who are swimming, dancing, tennis, actors, musicians, whatever, technology, IT, programmers, business boys. Today we have students in grade 10 that have their own business. So how can we support them to either come late to school or leave early, and how can we support them with the classes that they are missing? So Michael over here is a scientist. This is Audrey. And here we have Laila, she's a dancer. Stefan, from right from grade seven, he was interested in robotics and programming. So we have a period in a, a schedule that is called study hall or independent work. And during that time, a child can work on, on anything. Either he can complete any project or quiz or whatever he needs to complete. So what Stefan would do, he would go straight to the programming and the 3D room. And we noticed that this boy is a lot into programming and robotics. So we helped him, we supported him, and what Stefan did is he created a prosthetic arm. And he decided to give it, to literally donate the arm to veterans that had lost their arm in the war. And a business, I do not remember the name of the business company, actually paid him to make more and then these were donated. So this is the impact that this igniting or looking or helping a child to pursue their dream, this is the impact that has happened. We've had some very, very good examples of children that have really, they have managed to fulfill their dreams because of the support that they have got. So I want to take a second and ask you to think what is your what is your spark of genius if i were to ask you what's your secret recipe what is it if you were not a teacher what would you be or maybe that's your spark you love teaching or you love your role as an educator so can you take a minute and share your spark with the person next to you just share what's your spark what you really, really 
is your interest or your passion? What's your name? Malti. I'm going to ask you to share your spark. Mine? Yeah. I'm just thinking. What's your name? Laila. Huh? Laila. I'm going to ask you to share your spark. <laughs> Hi, can I, can, I, can I know your name? Jacob. I'm Jacob yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you to share your spark. <laughs> okay, uh, so I, uh, uh, Jacob, can we start with you? Do you want to share your spark? Really, but you didn't put me on the spot. Yeah. I explained as well. Um, for me, teaching, unfortunately, fortunately, is my spark. I absolutely love it. That moment of clarity when a child realizes, understands something, for me, it's like a curtain that you open up. <laughs> they, they, they just get that light in their eye. And you walk past them again in the corridor, and you, that you, you have that connection with them. And they walk in that, yeah, that teacher did something for me. But that moment, it gives me goosebumps when I think about it. When I said that. For me, that's, that's really much more. I love it. That's Great. Thank you. Can we give Jacob an applause? <laughs> Jacob, I want to ask you do you have that same glow and spark when you're correcting 40 papers? I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have found the affinity of little feedback. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Malti, right? Yeah. Malti, can you share? See, we are all teachers. Okay. Okay. But uh, my spark would be uh, to encourage students to learn to connect things. What they learn, what is happening to them, what is their thought. Yeah. See, that connection, if they learn to make, they'll be successful. So that's what I try to help each and every child. See, suppose you are learning today, for example, cat. Uh -huh. And uh, how you can use it in your daily life. Or just 10 objects around. Okay. So each and every child can easily connect in her or his own way. Yes. So that, that I feel uh, that we have to teach them as teachers. How to make the connections to connections, the real world. Connections not only to real world, everything is connected. To all each other. Is connected. Correct. So how they will connect with their everyday experience, every minute experience, including learning. Learning is just part of it, but their whole experience, how they learn to connect with each other, and um, then how they bring in that You like accounting and you're teaching a business, so have the option to fall. Yes, Pa. Yeah. 
to find solutions. Yeah. Thank you. I think before you leave, we would all like to have your contact because <laughs> you would listen who loves to hear things and find solutions. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, the age and stage we are in life, if we have a spark, definitely those children in our classroom all have a dream, all have a goal, all have interest. We have something that they really, really want to do. And we are boring them in math and English and science and also even... How in all these subjects we can help them bring that... So, I don't think at any other time like in today, there is a real, real need dancing. Uh, if you're taking pictures, with you. So if, or if you're playing tennis, or if you are in uh, programming or robotics, to share what you discuss. Read too.
Nej, uh... Can we can we have just one team sharing? Ritu, do you want to share? Okay. Are we? A, no, no, no. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, uh, we have taught a poem in English. Sorry? Uh? We have taught a poem in English. Okay. Then uh, they can design a model based on okay. what they have learned. Very good. And science class also, like you discuss about the water cycle. So they can come up with new things, uh, you know, what would have come to their mind. Anything, anything, just to give them some straws, cardboard, some clay, out of which they will make new models. Good. So that's how we are. I think we should also do that when we have orientation or professional development session with teachers. We should also give teachers some whatever material you were saying, straws and cups and see what we can come up with, right? They make very interesting, fantastic models they come up with and you won't imagine in English classes also they are doing the same thing. So out of the, uh, you know, the character they have learned in the poem, they can um, bring out whatever they can imagine. Excellent. That's really good. So we are all doing this in our schools, but maybe we are not aware that we are igniting the spark of genius. But I'm sure we are all doing this in some way or the other in our teaching. So uh, we are in International Baccalaureate Curriculum and uh, IB or the International Baccalaureate annually has an annual conference. And some years ago when I attended a conference, uh, we had a keynote speaker and he in fact shared something very interesting. And what he said is today companies like Xerox and Microsoft and Google, they're not looking at people that have PhD degrees and they're not looking at how much you know. That's not what their focus is. But what they're looking at the skills as to what you can do with what you know. So how can you apply what you know? That's what companies are looking at. So he said that the skills that were top 10 in 2015 are going to change in the future. So this is just from the future of jobs report. This is how the skills are going to change. And again, as I said, you don't have to write it down. I will share this with you, right? So active listening is going to change into the art of negotiation. How can we negotiate? OK, miss, you're giving me 40 problems for homework. What can we do to make that 40 problems into 20 or into 10 or into 5? How do we teach our children how to negotiate? So we called our incubator program Spark Tank. In fact, in our Dubai campus, next week we are celebrating what we call Spark Week. And we have Spark Mates and we have Spark Buddies. So Spark is the spark. <laughs> so this is our innovation incubator that we started a couple of years ago where somebody like Stefan that we saw he was into programming and robotics and he really had this dream of making the hand. So we had him, okay, this is your idea. Now tell us, what's your plan? How are you going to make it? Then tell us, make a prototype, make a draft, and then share with us what is it you need from us. Do you need support? Do you need a parent in the community to a business person in the parent community to help you? What is it you need? In order to do that, we have a panel of parents. 
that are leaders in their businesses, maybe a lawyer, a doctor, a business person, a programmer. And children, when they go through their process, the prototype they share in front of the panel. And then the panel decides, okay, what is it you want? I'm making a fashion line of clothing and I want $3,000. I'm looking for $2,000, so tell us, break it up. What are you going to do with that 2,000 dirhams or 5,000 dirhams or $2,000? What are you going to do? So I'm going to employ somebody this. No, you're not going to employ, it's a new business. What is it that you can do? What is it that you can do as a, as a new person who's starting their business? So it's not about encouraging them to ask for money, but what is the other support that you need? from us. Maybe we connect you with somebody in the business world. Maybe we connect you with a doctor if you're interested in working with uh, dogs that are sick. We connect you with the right person. We can make that connection. But the focus is not about how much you need and yes, take this money. That's not the focus. So these are the five steps. You come up with an idea, and then you plan, and then you make your prototype, and then you show us how it's working, and then finally you launch it in front of the panel. So you have to go through it. It takes some students, like Stefan, he started in the seventh. It was only when he was in the 10th grade that his pro uh, the hand was ready. So it took him three years because at the same time he had to prepare for tests, he had to do homework, he had to do all his project work. So this was not all that he was doing. So he started in the seventh and he finished it in the tenth. So it took him three years, but which is fine. It may take somebody six months, it may take somebody six weeks, which is also okay. So everybody either has an iPad or a MacBook in the school and the focus is always putting the student at the center we encourage teachers also to participate in workshops in order to have this culture of innovation even among staff. It's sometimes more difficult for us as adults to, to try and think out of the box. It's easier to make children think out of the box mm -hmm. than adults. We all know that, right? How difficult it is if, if you have to run your class in a very creative way and allow the children to choose how they will do their assessment. I mean, we are so test prone that we think the only way we can assess if he has understood the three laws of Newton is by giving him a test. What is Newton's first law? Define Newton's second law, state Newton's third law. But that's not right. There are so many other ways in which he can apply what he has learned. We accept and we create different kinds of projects, ideas, uh, how many of us over here by raise of hands are from IB schools, International Baccalaureate? We are not many here. So in the IB program, in the 10th grade, the children have to work on an individual creative project, which is called a personal project, which is sent to the IB for grading. Everybody has to do that in the 10th grade. So that's what we call the personal project. At the end of fifth grade, every child as a team has to work in what is called a PYP or primary year program exhibition. So there are opportunities in the curriculum where you're allowed to show your spark. And we walk them through these stages. We present it to a panel of parents. And then of course we give them certificates and awards and we recognize them in assemblies and what we call morning meetings is is like a weekly assembly that we have. Mentoring, funding, if it is within the budget. So this, uh, so the PYP is the primary year program and in grade five, the PYP runs from grade one to grade five in the IB. In grade five, they work on what is called an exhibition. And in the MYP, which is the middle years program, that is from grade six to 10. And in grade 10, they work on a personal project. In the diploma program, which is 11th and 12th, again, they have opportunities for projects. And they have a subject there, which is called design technology. Similarly, in the middle year program, there is a subject called design. And this has a lot of uh, 
opportunities like you were sharing about helping them to make a design, about giving them any material, or even it could be a digital design. It could be something digital. How can you make a, how can you make a house that is sustainable? How can you make a, you know, an energy, uh, what is the word that I'm missing? Like an, a house that is more energy positive, which is not wasting, yes. So these are all the ideas that they go through in all these experiences. Uh, this painting is done by one of our graduates. Her name is Tina. Uh, she's from Taiwan. And her right hand, all the time, her right hand shakes. She has no control over, she has some medical issue due to which her right hand is always shaking. But in spite of that, she's a wonderful artist. So the art teacher had told the class, the 12th grade, the senior class, to make a drawing that reflects our mission, that is igniting the spark of genius. And this is what Tina made. And she had to explain. So what she said is, this is the spark, the sun. And she had an explanation for everything. And it was wonderful, her explanation. And it's as soon as we enter the school, we've put up her painting now. So in spite of her disability, she was so happy and so proud to see that she was recognized. She was allowed to work on what she loved best. And that is there. As soon as you enter the school, her painting is there. Carl, of course, is a tennis player. He graduated in this June, and he's now in Princeton. Uh, this boy, Calvin, he was into programming, and he made a school app. So he first made the app, and then he had to go through a process with Apple to make sure that the app is available as an Apple application. So this is Calvin. This girl is her fashion designing, is her, her uh, spark. And she came up with an idea when she had to present she was first asking for money from the panel. And they asked her, why do you need this money? And she said, because I want models to wear my clothes and then to walk the ramp. I want to sell my clothes. So we told her, why don't you be the model? So she did that. She did a little fashion show at school. And parents were invited. And they actually wanted her clothes that she had made. So she was allowed to do that. So she realized she herself could design. and. She could be the model. She did not need to have other models, other people working as models. And then we, we encourage them to take part in different uh, uh, experiences, international programs. For example, the picture on the top, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, there is an international event annually, which is called Global Issues Network where children of all the schools are invited and they have to talk about a global issue and what is the action that they can take as young leaders. So that's the, and that gives them, that gives different children an opportunity. So there may be children that are very fond of talking or about debate and public speaking. So this is a good opportunity for them to carry out their spark. So we have a genius hour in the design, in the projects, we also encourage teachers to connect their lessons with the UN Sustainable Development Goals that we are all familiar with. And then we have programs for teachers to help them start thinking the design thinking way and help teachers to understand what today's startups are. Today, most of our students are not going to be working for others, correct? Most of them will be having their own startups. They will start their own business. So we want teachers to start thinking about that. And that's how our children's mindset is. And therefore, what, how can we encourage that in our class? So that's the regular training and the PD that is given to teachers. So they, the group of teachers meet and they, they work on an innovative project. 
I will share this, it's a lot for you to see now, but this is exactly how we embedded in our curriculum. In preschool to grade four, we start with inquiry and we integrate it in their units and we have more projects, more design, and they share it with the community. And then in grade five, they share it in the PYP exhibition. The six grades, they share their, whatever they work on their spa, they share it, we invite the parents for dinner and we have an evening where they share it. The seventh grade, we have business people from the parent community and they share their business plans. In the eighth grade, we have people that work on fashion, app development, filmmaking, and then we have an exhibition. In the ninth grade, we encourage them to follow, to follow this. We start training them to follow this in the ninth and then at the end of ninth grade, they pitch their spark. So this is what I'm going to create, but it's also important to pitch your spark well, because if you're not going to shout out your spark well, if you're not going to sell your spark well, nobody's going to buy it today. So we teach them that. And 10 is the personal project that I was talking to you about. I'm going to share this so you can take it back to your school. These are the 17 goals. We are all familiar with these, right? How many of us in this room connect our classes and our lessons with these goals? Can you give me an example of how? Sorry? Not every time, but most of the time. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. Even if we do it once, we have one. Can you give an example which uh, goal and how you connect your can anybody volunteer to share an example? Yes? Like uh, we taught deforestation as a lesson in geography. So it was connected to a lot of goals there, like climate change, sustainability. Over here. Yeah, yeah deforestation. Yeah. Sorry? He asked me to teach for geography lessons, so recycling and reuse, reuse, reuse. reuse. So, because connecting to any of these goals is connecting to the world, is connecting to real life, is connecting to the issues that we are facing on our planet today, easily, right? And that's why, because very often as a math teacher, children would always ask, why do I have to learn quadratic functions? How am I going to use quadratic functions in my life? So the more we can connect what we are teaching to real life, and this in fact helps us because it was very interesting to see that, I don't know how many of us are aware, uh, on Twitter I saw that they have so many teacher resources, lesson plans are based on these sustainable development goals. So you can find tons and tons of examples, lesson plans of how you can connect your lessons to this. I also found this in one of my colleagues' presentation when I went to the IB conference again, and he was sharing what is the difference between an atmosphere and the class that is engaged, but we need to work on making that atmosphere more empowering. So how can we change our atmosphere from being an engaged environment to an empowered environment? What is it we can do for that? So these were some of his ideas. So instead of teachers working to make it interesting, which we're working very hard always, how can I make my lesson more interesting? How can we change it to teachers working on tapping on their interest? So the first step is to identify what is the interest of my class? And if I've given a project, is it necessary for everybody to write 300 words? Maybe somebody can make a poster. Maybe I allow somebody to make a blog. Maybe I allow somebody to make a model. Everybody may not be good in writing 300 words, correct? And that's not helping them. 
So giving them these options, uh, this is from the Stanford School Design Thinking Process and it's very similar to what we have in our SPAC, uh, Spark Tank. But it's interesting that they start with the first step of empathize. So it's very important to continuously uh, reinforce that whatever we are thinking of becoming or making, it's not so much about I want to be a millionaire like Facebook or I want to make millions like Amazon, no. But what is it that what are you going to create or make? And how can that have a positive impact on your local community, on your country, on the world? That is what we need to reinforce all the time, all, all the time. Uh, so we follow in the ninth grade something like the six thinking hats. So we start with the white hat, what is your spark of genius? And so start with empathy. What ideas do you have? How can you use this spark for others? And then who do you think is your target audience? If you're interested in making clothes, then who are, who's going to buy these clothes? Is it going to be women? Is it going to be children? Is it going to be men? Who is your target audience? What impact will it have on your community? What excites you about this? What, what you're really excited about this and why? And again, the last, what are some of the challenges that you face? And I shared this one example of a student on a Padlet. I can... Uh, maybe share that with you. Ah. So it's something like this, this is one of the girls and so what is her spark, her spark, this is the white hat, what is your spark? So her spark is reading, writing and she's passionate about ocean life, very, very passionate about ocean life. So how is she going to use this? So her, she wants to make a series of children's books and the name of her series is Ocean Explorers. And then, I don't know why I'm not able to share the full screen. I think I'll have to go this way. And so, for her book, she said the students of grades one and one, uh, one and two are the target audience. And she wants to make students aware of sea life that is going to be extinct due to pollution. That's why she's passionate about this and making the book. And what excites her is that the proceeds that she'll get, she wants to give this to like-minded charities. So when she sells her books, she wants to give the proceeds to a charity. And these are some of her challenges. Right? So we follow this six acts. And I have shared this Padlet code with you. And here at the end, I've shared some of the other resources that we have in our Spark Tank. So they are in the last column. For some reason, it's not visible now, but you will be able to. So I am not sure because I had an activity plan, but I don't think we will be able to go through the activity. But I want to leave you with this as reflection. So how can we provide them conditions in which they can learn what they want to learn? I'm going to share this with you. <laughs> and 
I know that I'm, we are running short of time, but I will just end with a little video that I want you to see before you leave. introduce myself. My name is Jaya and I work at the Dwight School Dubai. I, if you share your emails with me, I will send you and you will get my email. Sure. Oh, you can write on.